Hey guys, welcome back to another tech unboxing video. Today we're looking at the DJI Osmo Action 4, and this is the standard combo. Okay, so within the box we are given the camera itself, which is actually very small now that it's in my hands, and the accessory pack. So in the accessory pack we're given some instruction manuals which aren't that useful, a case for the camera itself, a different lens for the camera, and some of these things. I'm not sure exactly what this is. If you know, let me know down below. A USB-C to USB-C charger, as well as a screw for the mount, the battery for the camera, a sticky pad mount, which is where that screw would go, and then as well as the magnetic mount that sticks to either the side or the bottom of the camera. And then the rest of the box we have quick little propaganda and ooh, a snack. We'll, we'll eat that later. So let's go ahead and unbox the camera. I guess not unbox, unwrap the camera. All right, first impressions. It feels pretty light actually, good quality. Feels pretty rugged, has a nice like, I don't know, like very textury grip to it. Especially on the edge, it's very rubberized here. Yeah, this is actually really nice. This is the lens protector we were talking about before. And you can take this off. To reveal the sensor, and you can put this other one on. But I think this is the only one that's waterproof due to the ring on the inside. We we're also given some stickers, which we're not going to use. Okay, so let's go ahead and open it up. And on these cameras, if you see red, that means the camera is no longer waterproof. So opening this port right here means the seal is gone, as well as this side. This is where you plug in the USB-C and red right here, indicating that it is no longer waterproof. Then you close it up and it is waterproof again. I guess I should say water resistant. So you see here, we have micro USB slot. And for this camera, I did go ahead and buy a 512 gigabyte SanDisk A2, which is capable for 4K and pretty fast speeds. So it should be a perfect fit for this camera. So let's go ahead and slot the battery in. We'll see if it has charge. And the battery is only gonna go in one way. You'll see inside here, there's a deep, deeper groove on the bottom and there's an extended portion right here. So you just slot it in, drop it, and you'll feel a little click. There you go. And then we'll go ahead and insert the micro USB. And this will only go in one way as well. You're gonna have the writing portion face the battery. So let's go ahead and power it on. And it started right up. Go ahead and set our settings. Now, this camera does require activation through the DJI MIMO app. And you can skip it five times, but you eventually will need to. Some people don't like that. Some people don't care. I don't care. I have the DJI gimbal and that requires it too. It's only a one-time thing. And then after that, you don't have to care about it at all. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so we went ahead and set up through the app. The app is actually not too confusing. You just have to pair it to your device, have an account. It's just more of a hassle than anything, but it did prompt a firmware update right away. So that was helpful and that took no time at all. Also, there's a lot of features in the app that you can use and instruction manuals and suggestions. So the app is a good place to get some ideas. So obviously we have two screens on here one little monitor in the front that's also touchscreen so i have to unlock there i am it's telling you all the instructions of what's what where to look for what and then we have the back touchscreen as well so i have to unlock like an iphone and then every corner has different settings or you can just tap on it you see in the bottom left right here we have different options Photo, video, slow motion, time lapse. 
On the left side here, we have video playback. Now I did put the SD card in. It did look like it automatically formatted and it shows us the play time we have or how many hours we can record. 28 hours right now and that's running at 1080p. So if we click down here, we can select the different resolutions. Let's see how much 4K we can record. 4K 120 and showing that we can record eight hours. So it's really nice that you have that indication of knowing what you can record when. And then down here we have settings in terms of adjusting zoom. I have different quick little settings right here. We can click on pro settings to get more options in terms of field of view, color, and I will show video examples later in the video, but just doing a quick little run through for now. And then we have audio options as well, how we wanna record it, noise reduction. You see right now we have a wide field of view. And if we go ahead and change that, you can go to standard, which doesn't warp it. So it's more of a flat image like you're seeing here compared to like that action camera wider warped where it's more curved which is actually what I'm gonna use more. And then top left, we have a battery indicator. And if we swipe down, we get essentially a whole menu. So we have orientation lock, so you can set how you want it. If you wanna keep it vertical right here, you can click that and it stays vertical. We have screen locked. That way you wanna make sure nothing touches it and stops the recording or messes things up. We have voice control here, so you can tell the camera start recording, stop recording, and it'll do so, so you don't have to be close to it. And you can also enable and disable the screens. So if I tap this button right here, it turns off the full front screen, which I don't really understand the point of. I guess it goes wider and shows you the whole clip, but I don't know. Top right, we have different minute settings. If you have a wireless mic, which I will test out, you can see the settings in here. You can have grid settings right here, which is actually really helpful. Diagonal. It gives you a lot of customization options here. You can see the video compression. You can connect it straight to a device to offload files. And again, voice control, snapshot. So it lets you to go back to your last settings or a default setting that you set. Quick switch menu, brightness, and you can set profiles. So these profiles, if you want one profile to be 4K 120, you can set that right there. And then when you tap this quick setting option right here. C1. Oh, I don't want you to talk. C1. Your custom settings right there. So if you want custom setting for 4K 120, or you can set one for 1080 120 or 1080 60, it's up to you, but it's cool that it's there. And you can also go to photo and video mode from here as well. So let's go ahead and slide it into the case that it came with. So once we undo the latch, you can just slip it in through the front, snug little fit, and then you close the latch and it's in there pretty tight. Definitely has protection all around. The only thing that's kind of available to get damaged is this lens right here. You have access to the USB-C port right here still, but the micro SD and the battery port are going to be covered. Now, one thing this does provide is a little point here that you can add the little mount. So normally you just have this one here and it's magnetic. You just kind of snap it on. So it's magnetized, but also has these little feet here. And once it's in, this is in. Like I am actually trying to move it and it's not wiggling at all. You just have to pinch these edges right here and you can pull it out. And then the case adds a vertical option as well. So if you're recording a YouTube short, you have that right there. And then this mount is actually pretty universal. You can use it for a lot of tripods that come and just kind of thread it through, but also comes with a sticky mount here if you want to put on a helmet. Put it through like this, and then you have your little screw here to go ahead and tighten it to whatever angle you want. So that was just a quick little overview of the initial unboxing settings. I'm gonna go ahead and play with it a little bit more, and then 
we'll go ahead and show some video clips and have a more in-depth view of the Action 4 camera itself. Alright guys, so I've had the DJI 4 Pro for about a week now and these are my thoughts. I guess we can start with why I bought this camera. I bought this camera because I wanted a one-stop shop for all the videos I created. When I go to a gaming store or go to a convention, I want to be able to have this out. It's not too big, doesn't take up too much space and I just want to kind of have it pocketable. Go ahead, show what I want, don't worry about stabilization too much and then there we go. But also when I'm doing something like a tech review or a game review, just have it on my tripod, prop it up right here and it's good to go. I looked at other cameras that can achieve this while being the small form factor and there just wasn't too many. There's a lot of Sony's and stuff that are in the 400 range and they look really good and they probably can do what I want. But the fact that this was also an action camera and could withstand the weather and other elements and is a little more rugged, I really like that option about it. And the fact that this makes it so easy, DJI includes a little magnetic grip here that you can just attach. So if I wanna put it on my setup, I can just keep this attached to my setup, pop it in. I could even buy another one and have it multiple places. You can even pop it vertically right here and shoot something like a YouTube short. The other reason that I wanted this compared to a GoPro was because I use something like this mic. The GoPro, you need either a 40, 50 dollar cable just to use a mic and then you have a cable dangling or you have to have the medium mod, which is another 70, 80 dollar case for it. To me, that's kind of dumb. Like why can't, there's a USB-C port, why can't I just use it? And this one you can, and I'll show you audio from that later when I do a video test from this. Yeah, that's actually the main reason I got this just to be an all around camera. It has high resolution, high frame rate. And also I, I do sports too, I go snowboarding. So this would be something I can just take there, record, share with my friends. So you guys saw the unboxing experience. It was pretty good. You know, this is the box. Everything's inside here, compact, ready to go. Of course you can get different combos. I just got the standard one cause I don't need anything else, but you can get more with more accessories. But these accessories are actually pretty versatile or pretty universal, whatever fits the GoPro or any camera really, as long as it fits this, right? Now, while using this, I did have more time to play around with the settings of the actual camera. And I really do like this camera. Like I, it is a good camera. It starts really fast. If you press the record button while it's off, it just starts recording and it turns on. There's a lot of positive aspects to it. You have so many settings here that you can mess with if you're that camera geek and you wanna change the exposure and the white balance and color. You can even change the file format. And that's not even including the video settings. You have so many video settings here where it's 1080p, 2.7K, 4K, and you can choose to do a 16 by nine aspect ratio or a four by three aspect ratio. And then within those, you have different options in terms of stabilization. You know, you have the rock steady where it's almost working as a gimbal. You have horizon balance where if you rotate the camera up until 45 degrees, it stabilizes it. And then you have horizon steady plus, which like you can just go ahead and rotate this camera all the way and the shot will remain the same. Again, for sport stuff, that's awesome. You wanna go ahead and get some really cool shots while you're riding a bike and you end up just kind of swerving the camera with a selfie stick, it's gonna look like one smooth process. And depending on the resolution you're running it at, you can even slow-mo it. You can do a lot of things. So the features are packed with this device. Even if you don't use the gyro, 
let's say you have it off, this still contains gyro data for certain resolutions and frame rates where you can go ahead and do it software based on the computer when you're editing. Another thing I like is the SD card indicator at the top. Depending on the resolution you're running it at and the settings you're at, it'll tell you how many hours you have left up top here. And that's really nice to know. You know, if I'm recording at 4K, okay, I can record eight hours or something. Not telling you how long the battery will last, but that's what this little indicator is for up here. Overall, user experience is very easy to get to. You can look at the manual to kind of understand it, but I honestly just started playing with it, swiping around and finding out settings from there. It is a lot at first, but it's not that bad. So those are all the positive things that I noticed. Let's get on to the negative things. I am a sample guy. I use a phone for all my recordings. I'm recording on an iPhone right now. Sometimes it's a Pixel, sometimes I use another iPhone. I really wanted this dedicated camera to be a, like I said, the only thing I use, but I can't. This action camera is very, very bad at low light. Even recording myself now, I'll, I'll do a comparison later in the video of what it looks like but it does not look good. All right guys, so this is me on the Action 4. I have a little light that I was using with the iPhone as well. It's recording at 1080p 60 with Horizon Steady. Everything default in terms of settings. And how does it look quality wise? I can already see this display. It's a little blurrier than the iPhone is. Let's go ahead and turn the light off and see how it performs. It kind of stays dark. It doesn't really focus. And again, this is low light. Camera's not good in low light. Understandable. But the one thing that I will say that I think is that the onboard mic sounds pretty good. Okay, now we're using the Hollyland Lavalier mic. And it actually shows little audio indications up top. So if I speak into it more, it'll show me, which is really nice. The fact that it actually takes mics like these is very convenient. Whereas something like I mentioned, the GoPro requires accessories and that's just, you're spending more money. If only the video quality was up to what I wanted for what I need, but it's not, but sounds pretty good. You can tell that there's some blurry areas. I mean, I, mean, I did some Steam Deck gameplay and I did three videos specifically where this was used. And I think it's very obvious which ones were used. The screen looks a little blurry. The buttons look blurry. It's running at 1080p. 60 FPS, which is just what the iPhones are running at, but I think the sensor is not good enough to pick up low light. And I even tried brightening the room up, putting a light behind it, shining down. It just doesn't do well. Where this does shine is outside. So if you're recording things in the daylight outside, it looks a lot better. I think that is what this is for, but when it comes to my use cases, it's, it's a negative. It's, it's something that, okay, well, half of my content related to being in this room I can't really use this for. Even if the lights are on, even if it's bright outside, it's a no-go. So that, that is a very big drawback for me. With that being said, I will be returning this camera. I don't want to make it sound like DJI did a bad job making this or that this is a bad camera. It is not. This is the action for, it is an action camera. I took it upon myself to use it for other things because I've seen people do it before on YouTube. It might be a lens thing. It might be a this specific product, a bad batch, but I tried it out, didn't like it gonna stick to what works, which is a phone camera for me because the sensors are very good. Yeah, I don't mean to shoo you guys away. This is just my experience and I think I should share it in case you are in the situation where you wanted the same. We have a lot of advantages with this thing. This camera makes it very easy to shoot, but also get the footage off. You have a case here that they provide you. You can get other accessories that you can see on Amazon, different mounts, it's waterproof up to a certain amount. Battery slot is here. You can just charge the whole thing by USB-C. Micro SD slot is right here. You know, this is just, it, and it's at this size, like you can just hold this like that and walk around. Don't be a creepo, but like you could. Not do creepy things, but you can walk around with it. And also the mic sounds pretty good too. All right guys, so that was my review slash opinions on the DJI Action 4. Like I mentioned before, I'm not gonna be keeping this, it just, doesn't fit into my workflow of videos I make. If I was an outdoors guy and only recorded outdoor video, it definitely would, but I'm not. So I'm gonna get something better suited towards what I do. Don't think it's a bad camera. I actually think it's really great. Don't know if I got a bad one. I'm not gonna find out and exchange it and get another one and set it up all over again because I don't feel like doing that. I'm curious to know what you guys think. If you guys have this, what your experiences are. I haven't tried a GoPro because if I do, I'm gonna have to buy more accessories for it and I don't wanna do that. So if you guys have a different suggestion for me, let me know down in the comments. 
If you guys had similar issues with the Action 4, let me know down in the comments as well. As always, I appreciate you guys watching the videos. If you like it, drop a like. If you want to see more videos in the future, consider subscribing. Or don't. It could just be like this camera and we just don't get along. But we could. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.